Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in for this video. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the month of April, which is a lot of books. I somehow managed to read 14 books this month. Granted, quite a few of them are short and small, but still totally unprecedented. Never have read that many books in a month before. I'm quite proud of myself. I don't really know where the motivation came from, but here I am to talk about 14 books. I will try to make this speedy so this is not a very long video. I will say there are a few standouts, but overall it was a pretty average reading month. I definitely gave three stars the most to a lot of these books, a few fours, a couple fives, so let's just get into all of the books that I read. The very first book that I read and finished in April was Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is my second Celeste Ng book. I read everything I never told you in the fall in 2020. I liked it. I gave it three stars. Felt worse about this one. I gave this one two stars. It wasn't a compelling story for me. I didn't really find myself caring about the characters. So this book is set in a small town in Ohio, Shaker Heights. It follows two separate families, a single mom and her daughter, and then a rich, wealthy white family who lives in a mansion, a mom and a dad, and their four kids. This book deals with family dynamics. It touches on topics of adoption, abortion, surrogacy. It read very young to me. It almost had some aspects of like a YA teenage high school drama. And I actually watched the accompanying show by the same name on Hulu. I also didn't really care for it. The thing that I liked a little bit more from the show than the book is that they made the characters more rounded. They had more sides to them. They elongated their stories. They gave them more backstories. But overall, I would say most of the characters I was just, I found myself annoyed with. This just, it wasn't for me. Yeah, just leave it at that. Book number two was Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. He is an ex-football player. He started his own podcast and he wrote this book kind of right when COVID happened and he touches on a lot of different topics. It was quite a short audiobook but I really enjoyed listening to it. I gave this book like a 4.5 which rounded up to five stars in Goodreads. I thoroughly enjoyed the stuff that he talked about and how he approached each topic. I would highly recommend listening to this one. Book number three was Hillbilly Elegy, A Memoir of a Family and Culture in Crisis by J.D. Vance. I also gave this book three stars. Liked it, didn't love it. I found myself a little bit bored throughout. This book follows J.D. Vance's life story, growing up as a hillbilly and with his hillbilly family in Kentucky. He grew up with his grandparents and his mom that was addicted to drugs. Again, solid story, glad I read it. Just not my favorite memoir. I also watched the movie by the same name. The movie was good. I actually enjoyed the movie more than the book and it gave a lot of the people that the author wrote about a lot more brought life to them and made me understand them more, particularly his mama or grandma, which he had the closest relationship with. Next up, I read My Life on Our Planet, My Witness Statement, and A Vision for the Future by David Attenborough. I mentioned this book in the 12 nonfiction books that I want to read in 2021 video. I crossed one of those off the list. This was a solid book. I gave it four stars, really enjoyed it. My only critique was that although this book was great, I found Attenborough's documentary of the same name, which is on Netflix, a bit more impactful and compelling because you also had the visual images and the video to go along with his story and his narration. So if you have the time to either read the book or watch the documentary, watch the documentary because he touches on a lot of the same topics but the documentary is just so much more impactful. He does dive into topics a little bit more deeper in his book but Overall, both were great. I just preferred the documentary. Book number five that I finished is We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamandi Ngozi Adichie. Don't know if I would call this a book because this was literally a 45 minute audiobook. It's more like a short essay or like a speech, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's a great piece on feminism. And I liked how she brought in stories from her upbringing in Africa and what it means to be a feminist for her. Thought it was a wonderful perspective and enjoyed listening to that audiobook. Next up, a book I started in February, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right Now by Jaren Lanier. I gave this book 
three stars. Thought it was solid, had some really intense information in there, but I found myself extremely bored by it at times. It was definitely more of like a deep dive into social media accounts and how they are modifying our behavior. There were some really interesting takeaways and I liked it and I still feel like I would potentially recommend it to some people. It just wasn't my favorite book on technology and digital minimalism and, and social media because it was a bit grim. It was not very hopeful. I, mean, I don't even know if it needed to be hopeful, but it just didn't feel practical. It was more just like, here's how it sucks and you are gonna become a terrible person if you continue using social media. That was the overall message. Again, liked it, just not my favorite book on the topic. Another book that I started in February but finished in April was The Imperfect Disciple, Grace for People Who Can't Get Their Act Together by Jared C. Wilson. I mentioned this book in a few of my vlogs, but this is a Christian and nonfiction book that I was reading physically with some friends of mine. We would read a chapter a week and then meet up and talk about that chapter. And this book facilitated a lot of really good conversation and discussions about faith and, and God and what it means to be a Christian in today's world. Solid Christian nonfiction, gave it five stars. Would recommend if that is something that you're interested in. Book number eight, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I finally read it guys and I loved it. I gave it five stars. I wanted to do a whole video about breaking down this book comparing it to the Netflix movie and then also the Alfred Hitchcock movie from the 1940s because I watched both of them and I read the book, but I got, I don't know, intimidated because there's a lot of videos about that already. So I don't know if that's something you're interested in. If it is, let me know, I can still make it. But yeah, I read it and I really enjoyed it. This was a book written in the 1930s and this is kind of the first of its time in terms of mystery, suspense, gothic thriller thing. There was a little bit of like a slow burn and a slow build and definitely like took time to get to the action. But I found the writing so compelling. The author did such an incredible job building the atmosphere and the setting that I was fully in it. Like as I was reading, I felt like I was there. I got so invested in the main character. If you don't know, this is a classic gothic piece of literature about a young woman who meets a man in Monte Carlo. His first wife recently died from mysterious events. They fall in love. They go back to England where he owns a huge mansion called Manderley and they live there. She starts discovering all the aspects about his first wife and how she lived her life and how people loved her. There's a lot of mystery and weirdness about what happened there and you kind of can't trust certain characters and you don't really know what's going on and then stuff unfolds and I would say yeah the end is like I couldn't stop had to like just finish the last 100 pages in like one sitting because it was it was getting juicy but I really enjoyed it and I'm very interested to pick up some of her other books to see if I feel the same way from there I picked up Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Kelly I have a whole vlog where I talked about the ending of this book and my thoughts on it overall I landed on three stars this was a solid piece of historical fiction I liked it but not my favorite because I had some issues with the writing and character development and where the plot went but it was still good I learned some things about Ravensbrook and how prisoners were treated there and some events that happened in Poland it was overall interesting just maybe not my favorite next up I finished two books of poetry by Ruby Kaur so first one I read was Milk and Honey and then I picked up The Sun and Her Flowers I was inspired to pick these up because of Chantal from An Intentional Life and Christopher from Books and Jams. They both recently picked these up either from the library or a little free library. And I've been wanting to read Ruthie Kaur's book because I've seen this book in a lot of places, but I was like, I don't really read poetry. Why would I pick it up? I'm glad I did. I read both of these. Again, my thoughts are in that reading vlog, but overall I did like them because I read each of these in one sitting. They're quite short. It took me about half an hour for this one and an hour for this one. I liked some of the poetry. Some of the issues I had was with the content of the writing because I don't fully agree with a lot of Rupi Kaur's philosophy on sexuality and relationships. And she does have quite explicit imagery in both of these books. But I really did like her stories, particularly in here about abuse and the abuse she experienced it. I think she wrote that incredibly and it was very beautiful to read. And then in this book, I really like the way she wrote about her mother and how her parents were immigrants in this country. And the poetry that she wrote for her mom and about her mom was really beautiful to read. So I really liked certain sections of both of these books, but overall not my absolutely favorite so 
three stars. I want to pick up her most recent work, Homebody, to like solidify how I feel about her. But she did open my eyes to wanting to read poetry. I'm kind of excited about that because I didn't think I'd ever want to read poetry. I did enjoy these. I just want to read about content that I like. Almost there, book number 12, Little Labors by Rivka Galchin. I also mentioned this in my most recent reading vlog. This was a book that I found in a little free library because I loved the little cover and the book size was really cute and small. And I looked on Goodreads and CJ Reads from Portland gave this book four stars. She reads a lot of contemporaries though and essays. I don't, but I thought I'd pick it up because it was free. I did read it. I gave this book two stars because it was way too weird for me. This book was a collection of essays and short stories about the author writing her perspective on having babies and also babies in literature, Japanese literature. It was strange, it was disjointed, it just sort of felt like random thoughts that didn't fully make sense and I didn't really understand what I was reading about. It was quite hard to follow for me. That's why I gave the book two stars. Second to last, I finished The Tipping Point, How Little Things Can Make a Big Difference by Malcolm Gladwell. I've read several of Malcolm Gladwell's books and thoroughly enjoyed them. This is one of his earlier works that he wrote in 2000, and I was a little bit surprised of his narration because he's quite monotone in this story, and usually I'm used to him in his podcast and his most recent works to have just, he brings more to the story and he brings it alive when he narrates. And this one felt a little bit monotone and kind of just dry for me and the story was more about fashion trends and virality and epidemics pre-internet pre-social media pre-covid obviously so he talked about certain events and kind of why they became big things like Paul Revere and the British are coming and crime in a certain area in New York and a certain shoe brand and why they became really popular. I gave this book three stars. I liked it. It just wasn't my favorite of his. And last, but certainly not least, The Martian by Andy Weir. I also talked about this book in my most recent reading vlog, so you should probably go watch that if you want my full thoughts because how I plugged it enough, I don't know. This one was good. So good that I gave it five stars. I was very thoroughly surprised by this book. This is a science fiction about a man stuck on Mars. He's trying to survive by figuring out how to grow food and he's trying to fix communication so that he can let Earth know that, hey, I'm still alive, come save me. I was hooked. This book was very thrilling. It was a page turner. I became incredibly invested in the character to survive. I thought it was quite humorous. Warning, there's a lot of language in here, but the language fits. Sometimes I really don't like language in a book and it's really annoying. Like Ready Player One, I hated that crude language and the humor, but in here, the language and the humor just works just made sense in this sci-fi story. My only little critique of this book is that it is incredibly scientific. It deals with a lot of physics and math and science and chemistry and stuff that I couldn't really wrap my mind around. Mark Watney, the main character, is a botanist and an engineer and he is making these journal entries. That's kind of how the layout of this book is. And in these journal entries, he's just writing how he's figuring out these problems. A lot of the writing is very complicated and intense and long scientific math problems or chemistry equations. So there were parts where I sort of skimmed through that, but overall thought it was such a good story. And I have watched the movie a while ago and I really liked it. So I'm due for a rewatch soon because my husband has never seen it and I love a good Matt Damon movie. So excited to watch that. 14 books, we got through them. Thanks for making it through, if you did, to the end of this video. Again, I appreciate you guys for being here, for watching, for subscribing, for commenting. I feel the love and this is such a fun community to be a part of. I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye.